Former members of Unit 731, a Japanese military unit that conducted illegal human experiments during World War II, can be seen discussing the atrocities they committed in a video that was recently released. Coming just before the 69th anniversary of Japan's surrender on August 15th, the video has shed new light on the unit's past activities in northeast China city of Harbin. This is Jean Chengmin, curator of a museum dedicated to the unit and an expert from the Harbin Academy of Social Sciences. Over the past 16 years, Jean has been to Japan 25 times to interview Japanese veterans and record video testimonials. Unit 731 was a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit of the Japanese military that engaged in lethal human experimentation. Established in 1935, it served as the center of Japan's biological warfare in China and Southeast Asia during World War II. The museum was once the main building used by Unit 731, located in the Pingfang district of suburban Harbin. In August 1945, when the Soviet Union entered northeast China and freed Harbin, the unit had to abandon their facilities in haste. The retreating Japanese troops blew up the compound to destroy evidence of their activities. It's rather difficult to find evidence of the crimes or investigate the historical truth. We have long been searching for victims in China, but their words are only part of the evidence. What's indispensable is a testimony from the unit's members. That's why I started my year-long trips. Jean's trips began in the 1990s. At that time, the youngest veteran of Unit 731 was nearly 80 years old, while the oldest was 95 years old. All of the veterans Jean interviewed have since passed away. The last one died in April 2014. Jean said the videos he recorded have therefore become more important. Some Japanese veterans talk about it while lying in bed at home or in hospital. Most of what they said was about the core parts of Unit 731. They needed a great deal of courage to discuss what they did. Unit 731 was notorious for experimenting on live humans in order to develop biological weapons. They injected living bodies with a variety of bacteria, including bubonic plague, cholera, typhoid, and tuberculosis. Prisoners used for experiments, sometimes referred to euphemistically as logs by the unit, were then subjected to vivisections, sometimes while they were still alive and conscious, for the study of the effects of disease on human bodies. I participated in the vivisections. I did them every day. I cannot remember the number of people we dissected. At first, I refused to do it, but then they wouldn't allow me to eat. It was an order. Gradually, I changed. Another member recalled his experience with Unit 731. He died in 1999 and recorded his testimony from his bed. I did vivisections at the time. The experiment was conducted on a living Chinese woman who was infected with syphilis. She was sleeping. Because she was alive, the blood poured out just like water from a tap. I have no courage to recall things like this now. They would wake up from anesthesia and cry out, don't hurt my children. I cannot forget these things ever. This is another Japanese doctor. He worked as an army surgeon in a cooperative hospital for the unit. He admitted to having participated in 14 vivisections. Some were conducted simply to give the doctors practice and to test their skills. In the room, there were over 10 surgeons waiting for practice. A nurse about 20 years old stood beside the operating table. It wasn't quiet. Everyone was laughing and joking, just as usual. Then the experiment started. This time, the victim was a Chinese man. I don't know how he was captured. We didn't care whether he was innocent or not. Someone pushed him hard and he cried, kneeling on the ground, struggling backward. I also pushed him really hard. Later, he seemed exhausted and gave up hope. The nurse said to him in Chinese that he could sleep and that the anesthetic would prevent any pain. He walked slowly towards the operating table and laid on it. The vivisectionist wasn't very skilled. He cut a big opening in the belly, put out the intestines, cut them and connected them. I stood aside to direct. The man lay still in front of me as if he was dead. Altogether, six experiments were conducted on him, including one in which one of his arms was amputated. Almost one and a half hours later, the operation ended 
and he was dead. It is estimated that the unit experimented on at least 7,000 people from 1939 to 1945. Their victims included civilians and prisoners of war from China, the Soviet Union, the Korean Peninsula, and Mongolia. During my eight-year stretch there, I was in charge of driving and moving prisoners for the unit. There were people from China, the Soviet Union, and Korea. Once, I sent one woman from the Soviet Union and her daughter. I saw the little girl be poisoned to death. She was very young and cute. Whenever I sleep, she appears in my mind like a ghost. The process of moving the victims was referred to as special deportation, which began in 1936. Most of the victims' families had no idea what their relatives went through or that they died at the unit's hands. Furthermore, in order to develop more biological weapons for warfare, Unit 731 also set up a special class to teach young people how to cultivate lethal bacteria. One of the students recalled how he, at the age of 16, was sent to Harbin in 1939 with 27 other young people. In addition to cultivating bacteria, they were required to assist in operations on living people. I was ordered to brush logs' bodies. At first I was terrified. My legs were shaking. They told me that I could use the longest brush. I asked, do I need to brush their faces? They said yes. After the vivid sections, the victims were unrecognizable. I was ordered to put their organs into a container. We use them to cultivate bacteria. Archival data indicates that the Japanese military engaged in biological warfare in more than 20 provinces and cities across China, claiming more than 270,000 lives and infecting more than 2.37 million people with plague. Logically, bacteria should be weighed in grams, but in Unit 731, bacteria was weighed in kilograms. The quantity of bacteria it produced was enough to destroy the whole world several times over. Although members of the group were ordered to maintain secrecy regarding its activities, some veterans have still chosen to speak. I want to tell young people about my experience. I cannot hide the facts. A lot of evidence regarding the unit has been reviewed, but I think some facts have yet to be uncovered. I keep an eye on these things. Jean said he plans to go to Japan again this month to collect the last remaining possessions of another of the unit's veterans in accordance with the man's wishes. Jean said that although all of the direct witnesses have passed away, they have still left behind relatives and diaries that may detail the unit's activities. It is likely that more trips to Japan will be in Jean's future.